Good evening. Welcome to Love Logical DNA Not Required. This is Michelle L. Anderson coming to you live from Podcast Detroit, Royal Oak Studios. We are looking forward to intriguing and entertaining you every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Let me start today's show by saying thank you for joining our family, which is biological by nature, love logical by choice, DNA not required. Hello, hello, and welcome, everybody. Um, so my name's Delon, of course. Uh, I'm going to be your host today. Um, so today um, we're going to be talking about me and my personal love logical connections. You know, I have um, been on a journey, you know. I think, like, since I turned, let's say, 18 or 19, I was on a journey, and I was running a little bit of everywhere, you know, just trying to figure it all out, like who, what, when, where, and why, you know, and let's talk about it, you know. Like, we're going to talk about some of my personal, like, best friends, you know, I would say brother from another you know, some some people who I've who I've met who just changed my life, you know. Sorry, I had to write that down, you know, because I can't forget about him. Um, but people who changed me, I would say for the better, because I wasn't always per se who I am today. You know, and I can say Samaya has a lot to do with that. But even even let's say my ex-wife, you know, like she has a lot to do with it, too. You know, and the things that come to fruition, you know, are because you have to sometimes change. You have to, you know, mold to the situation, every situation that you're put in. Um, me personally, I would say a lot of my love logical connections have made a very big impact on my life. You know, and I, I talk to majority of them still today. Um, I'm going to start with uh Let's start with the beginning. Um, my first love logical connection. Uh, it was my best friend, man, Brandon Klein. You know, um, Brandon's my brother from another. But, you know, um, so we'll start with Brandon. And then we're going to go on to, you know, let's say I got to go with Josh. You know, Josh Josh is one of my, my best friends, my bros. You know, he's the countryest guy I know. You know, but man, like you, sometimes you can't understand what he's saying because he got so much draw. You know, really, it's just a big chew in his lip. But you know, like we, uh, man, I got a good story for him too. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna jump to let's say, hmm, we're not at the Navy yet, so we're gonna jump to Nick Schwank and Drew Kleiser. You know, uh, two two people who. I respect greatly, you know, I respected Drew and Nick, you know, like separately, but also together because they were, they were part of the, the tripod, you know, the quad, it was a quad actually, it was four of us. Um, yeah, it was, it was just good times, you know. Um, so we're going to, we're going to also go into a little bit of Navy history and we're going to talk about like uh, Swole, uh, Juan Ruiz Carrera. You know, we're going to talk about Swole, you know, he's, he's going to be my, my last topic of the Navy. Let's say that's going to be number five, maybe number six, but we're going to talk about Aaliyah and Jana. Uh, we're going to also talk about, uh, my boy Rodney, you know, big skis, you know, that's one of my, one of my best friends, man, to this day. You know, I know I can call him and he'll give me the best advice that he's anybody's ever got, you know. Um, and Rodney was kind of during and after the Navy. He um, he helped me through a lot, you know, and me and his mom got the same birthday. So, you know, that's that's going to be another good one. And then we're going to talk about uh, Will, Will Hart. Will Hart was uh, an amazing individual. Um, he not only rescued dog, like pit bulls in Memphis with his brother, but also he, he rescued me, you know, so I'm going to tell part of that story. Um, and then we're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be the finisher. So let's get it started with Mr. Brandon Michael Klein. So Brandon, um, 
me and Brandon met when my mom moved me from Detroit to Calum or Portage, Portage, Michigan. It wasn't qu- quite Kalamazoo. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, I had a tough time, you know, adjusting because you're going from a, a Detroit, which is an all black setting to uh, Portage, which is a no black setting, you know, like there's <laughs> like barely any of us there. At least there, there used to be, you know, I went to uh, Portage Central and I think I was one of the eight black children in the school, you know, maybe nine. And it was, it was a great education though, you know, like they, they taught me a lot, but I was riding the bus one day and, you know, like me and Brandon met, you know, he, he got into it with this guy and I was like, you know, I don't like him either. And we were just ace boom coons ever since, you know, I think I was what, eight year, nine years old, you know, like Mrs. Culp's class <laughs> long time ago. But, you know, from there, me and Brandon, we've we've had a, a great bond, you know, like from the road trips when we were younger going to Cedar Point, you know, um, funny story. Uh, I don't know if Brandon would want me to tell this one, but um, me, my mom and Brandon and my buddy Kook, we used to take road trips, you know, like mom would wake us up early and we would all go get breakfast in like different cities and we would literally like drive you know, for an hour just to go to breakfast, you know, just to be in a new place, you know, small town in the middle of nowhere, but you'd find like the best muffins, you know, like, so we're eating these muffins from these random people, you know, but one day we were, um, we were on our way back and we used to play this game and it was, it was just a fun game between kids, but you, you point to a girl and you say one for you, you know, and, uh, like we were riding and there was, it was just trees and everything in between us. And we were, we were almost to the house back in Portage though. And Brandon was sitting in the middle of me and Alex in the, in the back seat. And I think Jan was with us or some, somebody was with us. I don't remember. It was a long time ago, but we were laughing so hard, like, cause we were playing this game and he got me good, you know? So I was like, Oh, one for you. And he was like, where? And I was like in the front seat, you know, and he was like, oh, your mom, oh, my God, you know, like, and it was like just really funny. Like, it was it was hilarious because my mom was like, what? What you mean? I'm a beautiful black woman, you know, <laughs> like and we, we pulled up at the house and she was still going in on them. And Brandon's like turning so red. It was it was the funniest day. It was turning so red. And my mom put him in a headlock <laughs> and like she had, she made us trap him in the back seat and she jumped back there and put him in a headlock. And he was like, I love beautiful black women, black women are Nubian Queens. Like it was one of the funniest. It was like just one of the, my best memories. It was period. One of my best memories, like from my childhood, like that was a hilarious day. Um, I like, man. And then, um, strangely enough Brandon uh I plan to get married you know like uh when I was before I got divorced I was I was hanging out and talking to my wife about like who I would want to come and we kind of randomly like decided to get married you know I we got married on a beach in uh Colorado but it was and it was really cool beach actually because it was a crystal beach like it was un unbelievable I have the smoky quartz that I got from there it's right on but you know I um I called Brandon and he's like, yo, I'm going to be in Colorado like in a week. And I was like, what for real? He was like, yeah. So I went and picked him up and was like, yo, I'm I'm getting married today. And he was like, what? (laughs) And it was like, yeah, like you're the perfect photographer. So he took all of our pictures, you know, like he filmed the whole thing. It was, it was really cool of him just to like randomly be coming to Colorado. Like it was like, I always told him that he would be my best man no matter what. And he would always be there. And he just showed up right on time for work you know and it was just an amazing experience you know Brandon has always been that friend you know like no matter what to this day I can call him and I know he's gonna be there you know like something happened to me something happened to mom you know like Brandon's gonna just be there because Brandon's a cool calm and collected guy you know he was the brains of the operation I always told him that um number two we're gonna go to Mr. Josh Weiniger you know, uh, Josh is one of those Indiana boys from Du Bois County. You know, um, Josh is a great love logical connection to me because, you know, like I was new to southern Indiana and um, actually I'd lived there for a while. I'd lived there for about a good six months, year. And 
oddly enough, like me and Josh, he was from uh, where where Schwank's. He was from Nick's hometown, you know, um, Nick Schwank's hometown, and they, Josh just took me in, you know, like we were we were just brothers from another instantly dancing at the parties, you know, like just having a great time, and Josh, like he just he took me in. You know, and I had never I had never met somebody like Josh because he was he was crazy and he was just country, you know, just straight country. But he him and his brothers, you know, him, Butch and Jake, you know, they they were they're all like really good friends. of me. I consider all of them brothers because his mom just took me in, you know, like I was just a random black guy from, you know, from Michigan and his mom just was like you need a place to stay for the night it's like yeah you know unless he's gonna drive me all the way back to evansville because it's like a good hour drive where we went to and he she here here's some blanket you know you want some breakfast you know it's just like like this woman doesn't even know me like she should be like no you can't come I, i don't know i just had these like false perceptions that weren't what they should be you know and brand or not brandon but josh josh was like boy it don't matter you know it don't matter if you're black white green blue or purple come on you, you with me you know it's just you know he just my man you know like we hung out every weekend for years and years you know and i know when i go back to southern indiana you know that's that's one of the first people that i am gonna see is josh you know because that's i gotta see leo too you know shout out to big leo you know that's josh's son and Leo's Leo's my man, my main man, you know. And uh yeah, but Josh is Josh is definitely one of the people in my life who've who've changed my perception on things, you know, like he he changed me based on, you know, like how I saw the world. You know, a lot of people see the world I I don't know, I just I just growing up in Kalamazoo, like I thought I had like a just of how the world was going to be. You know, and because I because I dealt with a lot in Kalamazoo, you know, like I dealt with racism, you know, with the drugs and everything else. Like I was in all that and it was just time for me to leave, you know. So when I left, I didn't think that I would just meet this random, crazy guy who's like just ready to go like all times. Like, hey, you know what? You're with me. Come on. Nope. D's riding with me. Let's go. You know, I've never had to drive anywhere as long as Josh was around. He was always the car, you know. I Even though I had my own car, he was the car. He was the ride, you know. Ja, yeah, like, and his brother, his brother Butch was the, the craziest kid I ever met in my life. And now he's on tour with, uh, he's a Christian rock band. He's their, um, equ- not equipment manager, but he's their, um, production uh give me a second give me a second he's just one of, he's a manager that uh deals with with all the vendors and everything else he's he's like up there and he travels all over the united states on tour with these guys hawaii you know he's uh one of the people who actually talked to me first about becoming a vegan slash vegetarian you know giving up meat and giving up all the different things that are needed to be given up in order for you to live a healthy lifestyle um, and Jake, Jake, uh, when I went to Colorado, me and Jake were really good. We were really close in Evansville, but Jake moved away and I didn't realize that he lived in Colorado. So when I went to Colorado, you know, I randomly ran across Jake and we, we hung out tough, you know, like we were, I was always at their house. That was my main go-to, you know, go hang out with the fellas. And it was, Jake's got the, the longest dreads I've ever seen on a white guy in my whole life. But it's weird because he has regular hair you know like he has black people hair but i don't know they're they're native american and uh german mixed um so but that was the weiniger family you know like they're all just the craziest group of characters that i ever met all of them are unique and classy in their own style you know and i can respect that you know um i want to go to schwank Man, Nick Schwank. You know, like, Schwank is one of those people that you only meet once in your life. You know, like, man, you know, me and me and I don't even remember how I met him. I, I was in Eagle Village one day, 
And I think I went and I asked him if he wanted to come come join us at this party or something. And he was like, yeah. And next thing you know, he moved like downstairs from my buddies. And that was just the go-to spot. We had a blast in, in life, you know, and, you know, going and traveling back and forth to Florida for spring break. You know, even when I was in the Navy, him showing up randomly during spring break, like, we're taking you. <laughs> you know, like, I got to work. <laughs> you know, like, just the guys, you know. And Nick Nick was that guy, you know. Nick Nick always, always showed me respect, always showed me love, man. And, like, him and Lindsay, like, when he got married, I was his best man. And I didn't expect, I didn't expect the phone call. But when I got it, like, I, I remember, like, I told Steph, like, oh, I, I got to be there. I got to be there. Like, we were both in a wedding party, and it was, like, an amazing wedding. You know, like, Nick, Nick and Lindsay had an amazing wedding. They're actually uh, having a baby, you know, so shout out to Nick. New baby. All right. And, um, but, yeah, Nick, Nick was just... He was really, 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 really smart, but he came from a rough patch. Let's put it that way. Um, he didn't have the faith in himself, man. And I just like Nick. Nick helped me learn to put the faith in other people to like give them hope, you know. Because I always like I, I always tell you, Nick. You know, you're you're an engineer. Like he's an engineer now, you know. And like always talking, man, I'm never going to get this. I'm never going to get that. And he, no, no, man, no, man, just focus yourself. You got this. Like always designing every setup that we ever had for lights in any place, you know, like he always had the best lights set up, you know, black lights, you know, flashing lights, strobe lights, the fog machines, you know, like he could set up, he could set up a party better than anybody I know. But also like he was, he was a really good friend, you know, like when, all a lot of stuff went down with me in my life, you know. When I joined the military, you know, Schwank was one of those people who would just randomly call me and like, "Man, are you okay? Where are you at? I haven't talked to you," you know. And we just, we just had a great like, it's great understanding. I don't know, like, sometimes you meet people in life that you don't know why you click, but you just do. And like, I don't know. I respect, I respect Schwank, you know, probably as much as anybody on this list, but maybe a little more. Just because, you know, like him actually, I was the best man at his wedding. You know, I was, you know, I never, I thought like after a while, like, you know, because when I got married, things changed, you know, and it's like life changes. You're not allowed to do the parties. You're not allowed to just do the things. But Schwank was like, no, it doesn't matter. I got an old lady too. You're coming over. We're going to play some cards. <laughs> like we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it's, it's it's amazing the connection that you have, you know, just doing the simple things, you know, like you need a place to relax, you know, here, come over. You don't got to get a hotel. We got a spare room, you know, and he's always just invited me in. Even, even when he moved to South Carolina, he's like, man, what do you mean? He's in Charleston. He's like, what, why don't you and Samaya just fly down here? I got it. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm good right now. Let me get let me get it together. And he's like, no, just come down here. Don't worry about it. It's the summertime. It's nice. You know, and I, I love Schwank for that, you know, like open arms, open door, you know. And I got, I'm the same way, you know. If you guys ever come to Michigan, come on. Come on. I can't wait to meet your son or your daughter. Like, that's going to be amazing. You know, um, yeah, Nick is, Nick is an amazing person. You know, and me personally – so I'm talking about all these people, but I'm going to talk about me some too. You know, um, Nick saw me through, you know, with with everything. You know, I've been I've been through some some rough patches. You know, I, like I've been arrested. I've been, uh, you know, like wrongfully arrested, of course, wrongfully. You know, um, never been charged, but I've I've went through some stuff. You know, and Nick was always there. You know, him and Kay. You know, they're coming to bail me out. Like, what, what, what's going on? Like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like, it's good to have a friend that you always can depend on, you know, and I've, that's what this list is. These are my, these are my go-tos. These are my friends that I can, I can count on no matter what, you know, like that. I know that if I give them a call or FaceTime, they're going to, what's up, man? You know, he actually called me and told me first that, uh, he was having a baby and I'm like yeah because they've been trying and I'm so I'm so proud of him you know because I know he's gonna make a great father 
you know, like game recognize game, great dads recognize great dads, you know, like because Schlank, Schlank is like, he's he wants that, you know, like he really wants that kid, you know, he wants that bond, he wants to treat his kids better than they've ever could have imagined being treated, you know, he's gonna spoil the heck out of those kids. But enough about Schlanky. Schlanky, love you, man. Uh, Drew, Drew B. Kleiser. So Drew is actually one of my Colorado friends, but he's also an Indiana friend. Uh, Drew was actually Schwank's roommate in college. And like I said, we were, me, him, and Kay, um, we were all like just peas in a pod. We were just great, great friends. You know, we all stuck together. We all just like had a good time you know it's like the movies you know you couldn't you couldn't like literally we could we could make it into a movie because we had some some great times you know like some wild times swimming pools you know like just everything and just just the information like drew is an amazing mma fighter now so getting to go with him and um meet like people like tj dillshaw you know meet people and watch watch fights you know drew is drew is an amazing person you know like i never would have thought mr kleiser would be a a fighter you know like it kind of blew me away but you know hey you know like he's had it all pent up inside of him he just didn't know how to express it until now yeah drew drew and, and drew with samaya okay like i got a good story for you so when Drew first, when we first moved to Colorado, Drew would come over to the house and Samaya would call him Uncle Drew, you know, and he, he would always be like, what's up, Maya, you know, and one day she was riding her bike on the trail and she was like falling, like, I mean, she was going down hard and she was coming at Drew and Drew ran as fast as he could and he like slid on the ground underneath her just to save her, you know, like, just like, whoa, <laughs> like, what the heck, <laughs> you know, and that's, he was like, man, I never let anything happen to your daughter. I'm like, she's got to fall, though, man. It's okay. She'll get back up. He's like, nah, nah, she's got training wheels still. She can't fall. She's on two wheel. You know, Drew always, he always showed showed Samaya so much love. And me, too, you know. Like, I was, I was in a rough, rough, rough place, you know, like, because it's like life is hard when you're, like, brand new with a kid and stuff, you know. You got... You don't have any outlets so him like no nah, come over to the house we're gonna hit the hit the heavy bag you know we go downstairs and we're hitting the heavy bag and he's like get your form together do what you're supposed to do come on come on put your legs closer together you know bend at the knee <laughs> and you know that just that stress relief he was he was that friend that i know if i called him he's like come on man i'll help you ease your mind let's go you know and we're downstairs in the basement or we're we're pulling up his whole backyard, you know, so we can, you know, plant plant some stuff, you know, have a great, great garden, the greenest garden you've ever seen, you know. And I I really appreciate Drew for that because just the just the amount of like tension that he could take out of a room, you know. Drew is the calm, cool, and collected one, you know. Like he he would he'll take the tension right out of a room instantly, you know. I love that about him. All right, and then um, I'm going to talk about my girl, Aaliyah. Let's get to the Navy days. So when I joined the Navy, I, I, I lived in Evansville, Indiana. Um, Evansville was a great place, you know, but it's it's a little rough at times. But we met a lot of, like, a lot of family that we didn't know lived there, like Mar the Marcia, the Lynches, Marcia, uh, uh, Pete, and, uh, you know, my man Matt, you know. Like, we met a lot of good, good people in Evansville. Jada's, the Keiths, you know, um, Angie, you know. Like, we, we met a lot of really great people in Evansville, me and my mom. And it's like these are the people who helped me even more. Um, since I'm skipping to Evansville, uh, let me go back to Kalamazoo real quick. I have a lot of love logical mothers um, from Jan, Denise, Dawn, you know, um, Miss Galen, these are, these are my mamas, you know, and these, they're the ones who always, you know, always just showed me so much love, you know, Jan from, 
you know, teaching me, you know, she taught me a lot, especially about like myself and not being a knucklehead and chasing girls and stuff like that. You know, Jan, she, Jan, was she was a sheriff deputy and she was just an amazing, she's an amazing woman, you know, like the, the stories that she would tell us, like she goes to, cause when it, when a deer gets hit by a car and it's still alive, you're supposed to put it out of its misery and the deer jumping up and chasing her around the car, <laughs> you know, like just this, the stories, you know, she taught me a lot about clouds, you know, me and her watched a tornado drop in Kalamazoo and she was teaching me about the different funnels, you know, like just, um, when all the stuff in Kalamazoo happened with me, um, Jan was, Jan was always right there, you know, and I, you know, I, I love her for that. She can, she can always, you know, always have my back, you know, like, I love her kids. I love her husband, Bill, you know, the kids, Chris and Amanda, you know, they're, they're my people. Um, you know, Denise, Denise, Miss Denise Tucker, you know, Miss Denise Tucker was, she was one of my mamas, but she was the, she was like the learn as you go kind of mom, you know, but she always, she, Hey, you know, she was my lady. She loved, she loved me and my sister to death, you know, and I know when my stepdad got cancer, she was like, he can stay at my house. And I stayed with Denise for a couple weeks, you know, when my mom was going back and forth to the hospital. Not a couple weeks, but maybe, maybe like on and off a day or two. But, you know, um, Miss Gaylin, Gaylin, she, she was just there. Like, she was taking care of my sister, helping me. You know, she was the babysitter for my sister. So she was, but she, she helped me through a lot too, you know, especially when it came to, you know, talking talking about girls and, you know, just the, the simple things that we all go through as adolescents. Um, and then Dawn. Dawn was Dawn was my lady too, you know. She's um she's an amazing woman, you know, and, and I can't forget about Fred Hardy. Um Fred was my mentor. Uh Fred was Fred was an amazing man you know him and him and my buddy like they have a lot of similar qualities I think that's why I got so like attached to Will in such a short time um but Fred was Fred was an amazing person Fred was awesome like he was like my love logical dad you know and I'll I'll respect him I'll remember him I'll never forget his face you know he um taught me how to defend myself you know I was getting beat up in school you know, he taught me just, you know, just to play it cool, you know, always, always play it cool. Don't show him, don't show him your emotions. You know, Fred was, Fred was a good, good person, man. And I, I just, he, he would wake up in the morning after working the night shift and, you know, take me to school because I was kicked off the bus. You know, he would, I'd, I'd miss the bus sometimes and just to have Fred take me, you know, like he was, and we went, oh, man, I got a great story with Fred. Um, we went, um, we, I, was, I was in the Cub Scouts, and we were supposed to have this, like, day on the hill where he went sledding on this huge hill that's outside of Kalamazoo. Um, but when we got there, there was no snow. Like, all the snow had melted the day before, and it was a giant mud hill. And Fred was like, what you mean we came all the way out here for nothing he was like nah we going sledding and he tackled me and we slid all the way down this hill like i mean we went up and down this mud hill for probably about a good hour you know caked and covered in mud all right we got to the house and my mom was like uh-uh, what y'all doing it was like coming in she was like you ain't coming in my house she said no nah, you stripping right there <laughs> so I had to strip right at the front door just the guy <laughs> and she was like you can go to your own house Fred bye <laughs> you know and it was just it was just amazing it was an amazing time you know like he just you know I, it it devastated me when he passed away I think I was like 13 you know um it, it devastated me because Fred was he was like my main role model you know like when I I don't think I ever trusted anybody as much as I trusted Fred because I could talk to him about anything you know and like if, if if he was still here I know that things would be a lot different because he he could really get in your ear and like explain it in a way that it hits you right in the chest like oh so I, I, I respect and I love Fred for that. You know, like he was, 
he was my rock, man. And I know he did. Oh, man, I miss him. But my other rock, though, uh, let's, I'm going to skip the Navy real quick, and I'm going to go to uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I, was in, I was in Memphis uh, because of a buddy named Joe Snow, you know, and he said, let's go to Memphis, you know. And when we got there, I didn't, I didn't necessarily, like, have anywhere to stay, have nothing to do. You know, I slept in my car for a couple days because when I got out of the military, like, I literally, like, was homeless for a while. You know, like it was it was a really rough patch in my life and I needed needed someone's just to help. I just needed someone to help out, you know, and like I, I still had my car and everything else, but I was I was struggling, you know, and like I tried to go to the VA in Memphis and they shut me down and I tried to go to the VA in Florida and I got shut down and it was it was just to the point to where I was just over it so I was like I'm gonna sleep in my car and something's gonna happen um Will one day I was uh his dog got loose and I took his dog back to him and it happened twice and you know like uh it was crazy cause meeting meeting Will like he was just so cool and he was like oh he was like you know Joe Snow and I was like yeah I know Joe Snow and he was like oh man that's my boy you know and so we called Joe and Joe like vouched for me and everything and Will was like man you stink bro (laughs) he was like man bro like where you at what you doing right now I was like man I'm just trying to make it you know and he um he actually like took me in you know like gave me a shower gave me a room you know like introduced me to everybody you know his brother eric he's a great guy eric hart you know will um he used to save dogs in memphis you know and um will's one of the only guys that i brought home you know um it was just because when he spoke it was it was like it gave power you know like will's speech like he was a he was actually a rapper down in memphis and he could write like the best songs, you know, and I I just loved like just being in that moment. You know, that moment was great. Like my mom, um my mom was actually pretty sick, so that was the only reason I left. And then I met I met my ex wife and the rest is history, but Will Will passed away too. And I I wept, you know, like that's the best way you can put it. Like I Will meant a lot to me because he changed he changed me you know like I was I was at that point to where you lose faith in the world you know like you lose you know all hope all hope is lost you know you're pretty much like down on your luck homeless you know like going in reverse with your life you're not moving forward you're you're going in reverse like it was like a train you know it was backing up into it the station that it just left and Will, what he did is he actually, he actually saved me, man. Like, Will, he put a lot of emphasis on, like, you got to do something that's meaningful. He was like, you can write, so let's write. And we would sit down at the table and write for what seemed like hours, just writing and writing. Then he's like, let's go to work. So we're going to work with his brother. And... Will always, always, always made sure that, you know, like everybody was good. Everybody ate, you know, everybody had a place to sleep. They had a blanket, you know, and his daughter lived with him, Ava. Uh, Samaya's actually name, middle name is the same as his daughter's middle name. It's um, Samaya Grace Kennedy, and it was Ava Grace Hart, you know, and um, that I gave. So Will's daughter passed away as well. Uh, she it was a long story, but she passed away and Will passed away shortly after. And that little girl was the happiest little girl you ever met in your life. She was so chill. Oh, she would she would give you that face though. You know, like, mm, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, you know, and Will the the love that he had for his daughter is what made me want a daughter, you know, like because, you know, like you never, you never met a better father than Will, you know, like Ava, she, like, she was just like Samaya, you know, like, and it's, it's like, it's crazy to me because you never, you, I never would have expected to 
meet someone like him, you know, like meeting him, you know, not only instilled a little bit of power into me, but also it, it made me, you know, understand that there is good people, there are good people in the world. And that sometimes you have to, you know, show the love to the other people, you know, like just, you got, you have to show the love. You have to make sure that you appreciate everybody, you know, because you never know, like the person you're talking to at across the table can be your next love logical connection. Maybe you guys don't work out if it's a date, but they could end up being like that sister that you were missing, that, that missing piece of the puzzle that just helps you. It gives you that spark, that idea that motivates you to move forward in the world, in this life, you know, and that's why I very much appreciated Will, you know, like, cause man, when he, when he gave you a spark, it was like a firecracker, bow, you know, but Will, Will was an amazing young man and he will always be remembered and he will always be loved forever, him and Ava. Um, but moving on from Will, I gotta go to, I gotta go to my boy. Actually, yeah, I gotta go to my boy, uh, Skeezy. You know, Rodney, Rodney Silas. Um, Rodney was the wild child, you know, but like I said, when I got out of the military, like I was, I was just alone, you know, like I was in Florida and I had all these people around me, but I had nobody around me. And Rodney, I don't even remember how we met. Like I remember how we met, but I would never tell it. And <laughs> I was like, yo, you want to come with us? And he was with, he was with me every day after that. Like until I went to Memphis, like he was, he was mad that I left, you know, he was like, what, what, what are you doing? You know, why are you doing this? But like Rodney, like he, man, we took care of each other, you know, like, cause I was homeless and he was homeless at the same time, you know? And it was like, you, I had, we had money, but we didn't have like, the money you know we had money but we didn't have the money like we would literally like go and you know just live you know we'd be on the beach all day you know playing volleyball you know going going to the the different shops you know dancing with uh isai isai was the one of the he was a local dj and bartender so he'd go and he'd take us to the dance battles and stuff and the the bartender wars like it was it was just an amazing life lived you know with literally like nickels in your pocket you know skeezy taught me that you can have fun regardless of if you're rich if you're poor if you you know you don't got nowhere to go you know you're sleeping in your car you know like no matter what like he's you you can have fun he's like it's not about what you know it's about who you know and i'm skeezy i know everybody <laughs> you know and we just we lived man like for for about six seven then probably longer than that you know six six months we lived you know because it was while i was in the navy and after i got out and he always always made sure that you know like i was taken care of his mom always making sure that i ate you know his cousins and stuff you know his brother like what y'all doing, man? Y'all both look hungry. To <laughs> like I'll never forget, man. And and me and his mom have the same birthday, so it was like once we found out we were both Tauruses, you know. And she was she was right there, you know. She was like, "What you doing? What y'all doing tonight? You gonna keep my son safe? You gonna keep him out of trouble?" Like, yes, ma'am. You know, she, I like him because <laughs> you always show your respect. You know, let's respect your elders. But yeah, she. After that, we were we were good to go, you know. Like Skeezy lives in uh, Las Vegas now. Uh, I saw him last year, uh, yeah, last year in March, and he was uh, it was the same same guy, just different swag, you know. Like I can I can respect him, you know, so much more because he has he was actually going through the same thing that I I went through like two months later, but it was it was crazy to me because just seeing how much he had grown and seeing like how much he's improved, even watching him on Snapchat today, you know, like he's, he's the buffest little man. I know, you know, little man, extra buff, you know, like works with the magic Mike show. If that tells you guys anything, he's skeezy's skeezy's that man. And he's, his dreadlocks are so much better than mine. I should have started mine when he started his, like we've, like we've talked about, but you know, life and time goes on. You know, but I know I can call Skeezy right now and be like, what's up? 
I'm on my way to Vegas. And he'd be like, man, come to the house. You staying with us. You know, look, we're going to go here. We're going to go to this place. We're going to go to that place. And we're going to have the best time of our life. we just going to dance because he's the best. He's one of the best dancers I know. Um, yeah, that's skeezy though. Like he's, he's my man, you know? And then, um, who else? Rodney, Drew, Brandon, Josh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah and Miss Jana. Um, I didn't really want to get into this, but you know, like I'll talk about it, you know, cause I got time. Um, Aaliyah was my friend that was there for me the most out of anyone in the Navy, you know, Aaliyah, like, it's funny. Cause we were just talking about this. Um, so a lot of things happen, you know, like my mom, when I, while I was in the Navy, my mom got hit by a car, you know, going, walking across the street and dragged down the road. And not even a few months later, my, my grandpa died, you know, and I was like away during all this. And it just, it just like made me miss home so much, you know, especially like I was worried about my mom, you know, I was talking to my sister and she's telling me about mom and it's like how she doesn't remember things sometimes. And, you know, like she's, she's gotten over all this, but you know, at the time it was still fresh and it was, it was very concerning to a young man's heart, you know, especially like being a mama's boy. Yeah. I said it, I'm a mama's boy, but you know, like it was, it was just one of those things that, it hurt me immensely. Like it, it, it took, took something from me almost like, you know, losing my grandpa and almost losing my mom. Well, I, when I was, um, so Aaliyah, Aaliyah is one of my Navy buddies, but Jana, let's start with Jana because me and Jana were, were kind of cool. You know, like we were like, she was more friends with Aaliyah. Uh, she actually knew Aaliyah from like back home and everything else. And she came to Pensacola to visit us. And she ended up like never going, never went home. But <laughs> like, it was just funny because she, um, like she, she changed everything, you know, like Jana, Jana was like there at the perfect time, you know, with nothing to do, um, because the military wouldn't let me leave to go to my mom. Um, they couldn't get a flight for me for two days. Um, they they told me like my red cross message came through that my mom was in critical condition and they also told me that i was too unstable to drive cuz i was i was bawling i was tears you know and um i called everybody i could you know like i called swole I called Aaliyah, I called you know um called z and z was like where are you at and I told her where I was at because they wouldn't even let me leave my chief's or actually it was the CO's office. I couldn't leave the CO's office. And he was like, you can't leave until she comes. So she, about a half hour, she walked up there and they were like, you got a license. He's got insurance. Here's the keys. You're driving. He'll tell you where to go. And yeah, we, we made it to Evansville in like, I think it was like seven hours. It was a nine hour drive. Oh my God. I was punching it the whole time. Like even like, man, it's, it, there's a lot more to that story, but we'll leave that out. Like I was punching it the whole time and it was, it was just amazing how fast we got there. And you know, my mom, she ended up being okay. And me and Z, we took care of my mom for that, for the two weeks, about a week and a half. And then after that, um, knowing mom was okay and everything else, we went on an amazing road trip. Like we went from, we went from um, Evansville, Indiana, to Pennsylvania to see one of our other Navy, one of my Navy friends that had gotten out because she got pregnant. Um, to Pennsylvania, to Washington D.C. and we got lost in D.C. and drove in circles for probably about three hours. <laughs> I was like, "Is this the same toll lady, or is this a different toll lady?" Like, yeah, I was, I was kind of goofy but whatever um yeah we drove around dc it got dark and then we drove and saw some monuments and then we got back on the highway and the lady told us the right way to go she laughed at us she didn't charge us the i think the third or fourth or fifth or sixth time after she saw us but yeah we cut back down to florida you know um yeah it was crazy it was just 
it was just crazy, you know, like it was it was what was needed for that craziness that was happening in my life, you know, like she and Z was always there, you know, like even when um I, I drove somebody from Memphis to Florida, you know, with thinking that it would it would be cheaper on gas and I spent like almost all my money. She was like, Here's a hundred bucks. She's like, you know, you owe me. Next time I see you. And I didn't see her for years and years, but you know, always pay pay back your dues. Um but yeah, Z Z's just she's that kind of person. She's awesome. She's smart, sophisticated, cool, you know, and then Aaliyah Aaliyah is my girl, you know, like she is She's. I can talk to Aaliyah about anything, and she'll always give me her honest, straightforward answer. You know, like I love Aaliyah. You know, she's she's my BFF. You know, like she's my Navy best friend. Her and Hoover. Oh, can't forget Hoover. But Aaliyah and Hoover together were like my two BFFs. Like we hung out like the like thickest thieves. We were just everywhere together. You know, like and it's crazy how you meet people and you lose people and you meet people. But these are the people who stuck with me, you know, like Aaliyah, she always, always gives great advice, she's a great, like, film editor, like, she's, she's great at making short films, uh, she actually, um, a few years back, I called her, and, um, she made a video for one of my residents in the nursing home's family for his, for his daughter, and for his funeral, like, he actually, uh, made videos, um, it was a video that him him telling his daughter like certain things like we took him to different settings like parks and um, sitting by a stream and stuff like that and um, like she edited it and they played like his his main video at the funeral that was him like saying how sorry he was to his family and how much he loved everybody and it was it was absolutely amazing like it was one of the most amazing like things that anyone's ever done for me let alone like for a perfect stranger um mr olson that was his name like mr olson was a great he was a great guy himself um but yeah like uh last but not least because i got like 10 minutes left i want to talk about swole uh juan ruiz carrera swole man um so at a point in my life um put this at the very end because it's it's kind of deep you know um all that stuff happened with my mom. Um, my grandpa passed away, and I was still in the Navy. Um, Swole was just my guy. Like, he was he was there with me while I was in the Navy. And, you know, after he got out, you know, we helped him get home and everything else. But he I, – while I was in, he, he, was, he lived with me. He was like my – he was my, my go-to guy. He was with me all day, you know. And he, um, he saved my life. You know, um, so after all that stuff happened, I I had some I had some issues because I was I was hurt, you know, and I went in the military. I went back to the military and I had a petty officer at the time. He was a first class petty officer. Uh, he was he was just not a very good person. Let's put it that way. But there was a picture of me that went viral and I left my computer up one day and he printed this picture off and like showed and posted it everywhere. And I lost it. Like I lost it. Cause I was, I was just not in the mood to be like made fun of or like have a bunch of people. Like I felt like everybody was looking at me. So I kind of, kind of lost it. And when I lost it on him, I ended up uh, getting told that I was going to have a sea bag inspection on Monday. I got to get everything prepared whoop to whoop yada 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 and I was like super upset you know and I was I was like you know honestly I'm not gonna be here on Monday don't even worry about it and yeah I, I went home and I attempted to commit suicide you know um it's hard for me to say that because I've never like I don't really tell people about that you know and like Aaliyah was there Jonna was there but mainly like Swole was there you know like Swole he he just he was he was just there and he came and he he was with me he actually um he found me in my room and he uh grabbed me you know swole was my lieutenant dan you know like he he literally like threw me on his back got in my car and drove me to the hospital running all the red lights you know because the ambulance came and i sent the ambulance away and 
Swole was like, nah, <laughs> not today, player. You know, and Swole saved my life. You know, he um he changed he changed everything because I I wouldn't have been here. You know, and he um he really like he really made a difference. You know, because without him, I wouldn't have my daughter. You know, without him, I wouldn't have like some of the life experiences that I have today. You know, um, he made a diff- like a huge difference in everything that was going on. You know, like he he just saved my life. You know, and I respect him and I love him forever. You know, like because I wouldn't I wouldn't have anything that I have today without you know without Swole. Uh, Juan Ruiz Carrera you know yeah Juan um, he uh, he he like he did something that nobody could and that's give me a second chance you know like Will gave me a second chance mentally um, I've had a few other people give me some second chances phys- physically like you know like Drew you know uh, emotionally Josh Josh really, really helped me, you know, like, and, you know, like, just all around together between Aaliyah and, and Juan, like, they, they changed who I was as a person, you know, like, all these people that I've talked about today are, like, they're my people, they're my sisters, they're my brothers, you know, some of them are my moms, I had one dad in there, you know, and these these were like my love logical family. Like I have a huge love logical family, and if I ever do get married again, it's gonna be a big wedding. Everybody's coming, everybody. Um, but yeah, th- this is my love logical family. You know, like I wasn't always stable enough to actually talk about it. You know, like mentally, it scared me to like have people find out and have people know, but I don't, you know, like sometimes you got to get your truth out there because your truth will set you free, you know, no matter what. And these love logical connections are my truth, you know, like from saving one's life to living, living on a prayer, you know, (laughs) you know, like it's, it's, it's like, man, you know, you never know in life never stop meeting people because the person that you can you're sitting next to might be that one you know might be that person that you know one day they're going to do something for you that's going to change your everything you know they might just be that ear that you need because sometimes you got to remember to get things off your chest you know you need your love logical family like you need your real family no matter what you know, like people in this world, they they don't like people, you know, and I don't I don't like people that often. You know, I'm I'm kind of a an introvert these days. I don't go out like I used to, I try to kind of avoid everything, but you know, like always remember to meet people because people are what make make us who we are, you know, the people we meet, the hands that we shake, you know, the places that we go the experiences that we have, you know, the experiences, especially those experiences happen for a reason, you know, rather it be, if you're thinking about something crazy, you know, like, you know, get help, you know, let it out to a friend, see what they think, you know, just make sure you choose the right one, you know, and, um, this was Delon Kennedy's, um, love logical challenge. You know, like I challenge myself to put some things out there and talk talk about some of my friends that have really like showed me a lot of love over the years and I respect immensely. Um, if you guys had any questions or anything else, you know, write me on Facebook or text me. You know, if you got my number, text me. You know, but um podcast DNA not required love logical biological by nature love logical by choice uh you can look us up at info at lovelogical.com www.lovelogical.com we're on facebook instagram and yeah you can find me too thanks for listening if you did uh if you didn't catch it later thank you